Welcome in a new video where I will show you a game of Bobby Fischer and show you exactly what you could learn from the great Bobby Fischer. Maybe the best player of all time. What do you think? Leave it in the comments. Guys, here, Fischer with the black pieces and his opponent starts with the move knight f3 and Bobby Fischer decides to copy and after c4, Fischer plays the move g6. He really liked to get this Fianchetto in and play the King's Indian defense. And that's also an opening I would recommend you to play. Get your king to safety early on. And now also think about really advancing your pawns and threaten the center next. And in the meanwhile, white was already sticking to the opening principles, having a pawn in the center, developing pieces, still some development to be done, but the same goes for black. And this possession already looks good for both white and black. Here, white could go for the move e4, going to the king's in defense after the move d6. But instead, white decided to prevent all that and went bishop to f4. And this is a different game. And here, Fischer shifts his mind to a different opening, and that is called the Groomfeld after the move d5. Right, great move because you already developed your pieces, you already have your king to safety. You need to make sure to have a pawn in the center to get a hold on the central squares, which are so key to this game and where you can control most squares from. And in the meanwhile, white already has a good center over here, so black really needed to act. Here, the move queen to b3, attacking this pawn once more also getting some pressure here so here bobby fischer needs to act and he does it right away by taking this pawn maybe you would think that's not a good move because you give up your central pawn it's against the opening principles well yes but there's always exceptions and here fischer had a clear idea in mind because now the queen is also under attack and when you take it like his opponent did this pawn is now under attack but this pawn is not attacked anymore so fischer plays the move c6 defending the c7 square and also making room for maybe a queen to go here maybe the knight will also join here and most importantly getting a hold on the central square so white cannot advance easily here white plays the move e4 getting another pawn in the center great move but what's the right follow-up now so you have already developed some pieces your king is safe you don't have a pawn in the center but you don't want to play e5 because that can be taken so it's important to keep on developing your pieces and that's what fischer does just develop your pieces and the knight is very strong over here also attacking the queen and here white plays the brook move to d1 getting a hold on this file but at the same time white forgets that you need to finish development and castle also for the very best players in this world the principles are the same and white forgets to finish his development and castle and that's why bobby fischer punishes his opponent in a beautiful game this game is called the game of the century for a reason so stay tuned for a lot of brilliant moves first move of that is this great move knight to b6 attacking the queen so the queen has to move and developing at the same time so getting an extra tempo basically and of course white advances the queen over here getting some activity maybe annoying black a bit with an attack on this pawn but so far so good what is the next move for black well this is very passive this is also very passive especially as this pawn might progress early on maybe the knight will come here so fischer plays a very logical move finishing his development with bishop to g4 setting up this pin and the pieces are developed the king is into safety and the only thing is that black doesn't have a pawn in the center but white didn't finish his development yet the bishop still has to go to either e2 or maybe c4 or whatever before castling so fischer looks for ways to make use of the undeveloped white pieces and king especially after the move bishop to g5 forgetting that you need to develop Better would have been just to play bishop e2 and castle. But you don't play these moves against Bobby Fischer, maybe the best chess player ever. And Bobby Fischer plays a brilliant move over here, knight to a4. Why is it so good? Well, if you take it, then you take away a defender of a key pawn. So if you were to take, then this is a great move, attacking the queen and the bishop. And still, this pin is super useful. 
And if you were to take here, attacking the queen, then simply rook to e8 is deadly. Because if you were to take, well, then you can take the queen with the check. You have to play bishop e2. And then you simply take the knight. And look at this. Three pieces against three pieces and two rooks. You need to move your bishop. But then this pawn falls. And this is already clearly winning for black. Especially because of the spin and the open file the rook already has. White saw all that and decided to retreat the queen over here, also defending the knight. But now Fischer simply can take this knight. And if you take back, like White did, then the e4 pawn is not defended anymore. And Fischer decides to play this brilliant move. Knight takes on e4. Why is it so good? Well, you open up this file basically and also attack over here. And you basically just won a pawn. But isn't this pawn just simply hanging? Well, it is hanging, but can you take it? Is it good? Well, Bobby Fischer will answer that question for you because this is what has been played during the game. And here Fischer plays the move queen to b6. Going away from the threat. But what if you simply take here? Well, then you have a great sequence of moves. You simply take back the bishop, attacking the queen. The queen moves aside. All good, maybe is what you think. But then, what about this pawn? Because if you take it, can you take it back? What do you think? Well, if you take it, then the bishop comes here. Look at this. Your queen will be lost with a check. So that's not an option. But do you have to take the knight? No, you don't. So you can also take the queen. But then you simply take back. And now the rook is still under attack. And you have a lot of activity over here. Rook a1 is very good. But then the bishop comes in. And black is simply winning in this position. So finally white came to his senses and thought, okay, I need to finish my development and get my bishop out and castle as soon as possible to get rid of everything that's going on on the e-file. So White developed the bishop to c4. Good move, a developing move, finally. And what is a great move in this position? Well, like before, you can simply take this pawn, right? Because if you take back, well, then the rook comes in and this bishop will fall sooner or later. After castles, you take the bishop and look at this, active rooks, great bishops, weak pawn, Black is winning. So that's not what White decided to do. White had another great tempo move, and that is to go here, attack the queen. And if you now just simply move the queen, well, then you're completely losing, because then you can take the knight. And after this check, well, then you can go to f1, and everything is defended. And in the end, you are a full knight up. So Fischer had a great idea in mind, but how do we execute it? Your knight is under attack over here. Your queen is under attack, the king is weak. So first, let's make use of the weak king. Let's give a check and get your rook out of danger over here. Check, the king has to move aside, as simple as that. But what's the right follow-up? Because your knight is under attack, your queen is under attack. Simply retreating will result in losing a knight. So Fischer saw that white is weak on the white squares and simply decided to give up the queen, a queen sacrifice for a bishop. A queen sacrifice for the bishop. I'm saying it again, because this is how crazy it is. White takes the queen and Fischer here simply goes for the bishop. And the check. But you think this is just completely losing for black. Well, it's not. Because the king cannot go here because of the rook, right? It can only go here. And then with this check, black already has a perpetual check, right? Because the king has to go back. And with this check, giving a double check, the king has to go back. And this check, this is simply a perpetual check. So at least black has a draw if you don't find the winning moves. But Fischer doesn't go for draws in winning positions. He goes for the kill and that's what he does. So indeed, he gives a check. The king has to move back. And now look at this. The knight can go to nice squares to pick up key pieces and pawns. With the check, you take the pawn. Again, you are in check, so the king has to move. You give another check, the king has to move back. And do you see another great square? Yes, here you attack the rook, right? So the king has to go back. And another thing is that this knight is now defended by the bishop because this pawn is gone. So one option is to simply take here. But there's a better move in the position for black, winning even more material. 
because what is now attacked the bishop is attacked and the rook is attacked so what's the best move in this position well if you simply take this bishop first you attack the queen with the rook and you still attack the rook and remember this knight is being protected so the queen goes here attacking the bishop and if you now were to take here you simply take this bishop and this square is protected by the knight so no back rank checkmate for now but we can defend in a way where we attack the queen and defend the bishop do you see a great move here for black rook a4 it's protected by the knight it attacks the queen and also protects the bishop you can't take because it hangs the queen so instead white takes this pawn and now this rook hangs so now instead of taking the rook right away you first took the bishop and now the rook so you have a bishop extra compared to the other line but how do we finish this we've all been in positions where you have material up because let's check it out you basically have a rook against a rook a knight against a knight so you have a rook and two bishops against the queen and an extra pawn over here but how do we finish this well it's important that your pieces collaborate defend each other and attack together so that's what we're gonna do first white decides to make room for the king to escape and prevent the background checkmate so also this knight can move but remember this pawn was hanging so that's the first thing if we can take a free pawn we take a free pawn and we attack this pawn right away twice so white needs to act and white decides to move the king over here so how do we continue well, we simply pick up another pawn and attack the rook, making threats with every move we make. The rook has to move, it does, it goes here. Now the question is, do we want to take this rook or play a different move? Well, if you're ahead, you want to trade as much as possible, because then your opponent's pieces will be less strong together and it's harder to create threats. So here Fischer decides to take the rook, his opponent plays an in-between check. Well, you could retreat, but then you simply take. So instead, Fischer goes here and simply defending from the check. And now his opponent decides to take the rook. This pawn is not attacked anymore, which it was before. But what's the right move now? Well, this bishop is not defended. This knight is not defended. This rook is defended. These pawns are a bit weak. So can you play a nice stabilizing move? Bishop to d5. Great move. Centralizing the bishop attacking the g2 square protecting the pawn and also making sure the bishop is protected himself so nothing to worry about with tactics a very smart move and white already needs to think about the next moves knight to f3 do we take it well if you take it then this is also completely winning with so much more material on the board but if you have the bishop pair please keep it because they're so powerful and fisher is going to checkmate his opponent in a beautiful way with these bishops so keep on watching because you want to see this and instead fisher goes for knight to e4 this knight was not doing anything and fisher decides to centralize it also taking away some key squares around the king and maybe also making sure that the bishop at some point can join the game when the pin is gone maybe later here white decides to attack the loose b7 pawn and of course you defend it get these pawns rolling and maybe you can promote them that is what you want to do and at the same time look this queen is now on the same diagonal as the king so you want to get your bishop there for sure white goes for h4 so when your opponent is better stronger has more material you want to create weaknesses and try to get some counter attack going h4 is a good move because you want to go h5 next maybe create some weaknesses maybe go h6 maybe the queen can come in at some point when the bishop is gone you just want to try here h5 great move preventing any counter attack and if the knight comes in here well you can set up an attack on this square but the bishop is defending in a great way so what is a good move for white well you want to centralize pieces get active and knight to e5 is very logical attacking this weakness which is protected right and we would love to get this bishop and here we would love to get this bishop in the game but it's being pinned can we get rid of the pin yes just move up the king and already you're threatening to go here set up the pin on the knight and attacking the queen and it is protected by the knight so the king goes back a check oh we already saw what happens if you go back because then you simply go here and pick up more material but the king now starts walking 
to f1 and we want to take away more squares from the king and that's what fisher does he gives a check and the king now has to move here cannot go here right because it's the bishop that protects that square the king has to go here can we make it go even further that side yes bishop check now it has to go here so this is important for you to remember if you want to check major king take away the squares where it can go to very straightforward and then make sure it's in check right but that's also what we're doing now taking away another square and can we take another square away yes with the check now the king has to go here and i will show you a great checkmating pattern it's actually checkmating too because now you're like okay well maybe this is a checkmate but then you have your rook that's not what you want but the bishop protects the rook the bishop protects this square and also takes away this square if you were to check the king and the king were to move here and keep on attacking these two squares then you can put the rook here for a checkmate and that's what fisher did in a brilliant way checkmate and two check with the knight the king can only go here and now this bishop protects this square the knight takes away these squares and this is a beautiful checkmate so guys a lot we can learn from bobby fisher even the best in the world use the same principles i'm trying to teach you so stick to them use them yourself and get better at chess guys don't forget to like subscribe and see you soon Bye bye